Welcome to the Midlife Career Rebel, the podcast created for high achieving professional women to gain the clarity, confidence and courage they need to go after and get the life and career they want. I'm your host, Dr. Carol Parker Walsh, lawyer, social scientist, brand strategist, executive coach, entrepreneur, and midlife career rebel. Each week, you'll learn strategies to manage your mind, navigate the challenges of midlife, and take control of your career so you can thrive doing the work you love. So if you're ready to tear up that rule book and create your own, you're in the right place. And I can't wait to show you how. So Rebels, I've talked a lot about advancing and promoting in your career, figuring out where you are and what you want in your life and career, defining success on your own terms, what organizations need to do to create spaces for you to thrive, managing your mindset, and how to take control of your career. But I haven't really talked about burnout, at least not specifically. I think I've talked around it. I may have even talked about strategies and tools of things that you can do related to it. But I really wanted to break down what burnout is and how it can manifest and impact every area of your life and what to do about it. Because it is so important and it creeps up on women in ways that we tend to ignore or not pay attention to, but could really, really take us out. I think it's one of the reasons why heart disease is the number one killer of women, why we're more susceptible to diabetes and hypertension and being overweight. And I think it has a lot to do with the fact that we don't pay attention to the stressors and the deep level of stressors that can cause and lead to burnout. So let's dive in. Now, burnout is a prevalent issue among successful professional women, although it's challenging to determine the exact prevalence since burnout can be subjective and it's often not reported. After all, the one thing that's true about women, particularly high achieving women, is that they're good at overcommitting and pushing through the pain and sucking it up and suffering through. Women just accept that that's what has to happen in order to get through and make it to the other side of whatever it is that they're going after. Also, according to McKinsey, women in leadership roles are one and a half times more likely to experience burnout due to things like the gender pay gap, a lack of career life alignment and structural barriers in the workplace. Now, it's important to know that burnout and stress are not the same thing. They're related, but not the same thing. And that's why I wanted to talk about it, because women will constantly say that they're stress when in actuality, they're experiencing burnout. Now, stress is a normal physiological and psychological response to a perceived threat or challenge, and it can be a motivating factor that helps individuals to adapt to new situations and achieve their goals. But when stress becomes chronic or overwhelming, that's when we're talking about burnout. And burnout, on the other hand, is a state of emotional, mental, and physical exhaustion that's typically caused by prolonged or chronic stress when we're constantly worrying, constantly anxious, and constantly under stress. And it's characterized by feelings of exhaustion, cynicism, or even detachment from work, and a sense of reduced effectiveness or accomplishment, or even a desire to really be effective or to accomplish. And burnout is a more severe and long lasting form of stress that can have significant consequences for both the women personally and for organizations, the ones that they're working in. It can actually cause mental incapacitation, which means you just can't even function. So while stress can be a motivating factor, burnout is generally associated with feelings of hopelessness, helplessness, and emotional exhaustion. And it's often a result, as I said, of chronic stress that just has not been properly managed. And it could lead to a range of physical and mental health issues, including depression, anxiety, and chronic illness. Remember I said, I think it's also the reason that women are suffering more heart disease, and that's the number one killer of us. In fact, in 2022, the World Health Organization officially recognized burnout as a mental health concern and an occupational phenomenon. 
So what are the signs that you should look for? Well, typically you should look for emotional exhaustion, like feeling drained, overwhelmed, or unable to cope with work or personal demands, or physical symptoms like chronic fatigue or headaches, muscle tension, or stomach problems, Uh, depersonalization or feeling detached or disconnected from work or personal relationships, becoming more cynical or critical or losing empathy, reduced performance and depressed productivity, motivation and creativity at work, or a lack of satisfaction or feeling unfulfilled and demotivated by work and losing a sense of purpose, or cognitive difficulties like trouble concentrating, forgetfulness and difficulty making decisions, or sleep disturbances like either insomnia or oversleeping right? So these symptoms will impact how you work. It'll impact your relationships and even your family. Because when you're irritable, quick tempered, and just don't want to be around them, that can have lasting, damaging effect on the people that are closest to you without even knowing that that's really what's taking place. And today, organizations are really trying to do more to be attentive to the well-being of their employees, particularly because of the impact of the pandemic and how it has impacted people's mental health, particularly women. And the impact to an organization's bottom line has caused them to take a more proactive approach. So in a previous episode of the podcast, I shared that 27% of women are leaving the workplace because of mental health issues. And a Harvard Business Review study estimated that the cost of burnout to companies in the U.S. could be as high as 125 to 190 billion a year in healthcare spending, absenteeism, and decreased productivity. And let's add to that leaving, right? People quitting and walking out of the door. We already experienced a great resignation. Now we're in the middle of the great breakup. So this is costing organizations a lot of time and money. And a study by the World Economic Forum estimated that mental health concerns, including burnout, could cost the global economy up to $16 trillion by 2030. So this is a problem. And overall, burnout among professional women can have significant costs for organizations, including all of the things that are that I mentioned before, including decreased productivity, absenteeism, high staff turnover, healthcare costs, decreased morale, decreased employee engagement. And on a personal note, burnout can cause a loss of wages because if you're gone or decide to walk away from your job, you're going to be losing money and your own increased medical costs because you're always seeking out the doctor or seeking care or your own medication or some other level of support, as well as maybe mental health professional support that may or may not be covered, and the negative impact in your home life. So why do women risk burnout? Well, knowing this information, you know, why do we still feel a need to overcommit to the point of burnout? Well, much of it comes from our thoughts and our beliefs, right? Which I talk a lot about, right? Believing that you have to make these type of sacrifices in order to get ahead in your career, because you want to be successful. You want to achieve those levels. You want that raise or promotion. You want to start that business and grow it beyond belief, right? There are things that you want to have. And while you're trying to juggle everything else in your life, you're doing it to the point of exhaustion, because you believe that this level of sacrifice is necessary to get what you want, right? So I want you to listen to some of my past episodes on this point, particularly around your thoughts and beliefs, and the power that that has to convince you to either go into something or stay away from something. When in truth, if you shift your thoughts and beliefs, you can actually take a different approach that can really change your life. The desire to succeed and pressure to prove yourself, the fear of missing out or perceived unrealistic expectations that you think the organization has of you succeeding or you have on yourself or societal expectations of what you think people think of you or see of you and how you need to show up or just having limited role models to really support you and give you a different idea and perspective of how to proceed, these are all contributors to the fact that we tend to overcommit and overdeliver. But it all really starts with a belief, a belief that that's the only way we can go in order to succeed. 
So knowing the cost, we have to stop trying to deliver at these unrealistic levels. And frankly, organizations need to stop passively aggressing, aggressively allowing it to happen. I mean, when you think about it, most of the time when women overcommit and overdeliver, no one really asks them to, right? But when a manager is silent about the fact that you show up before everybody else, leave after everyone else and show up every weekend, but they don't say anything about it, in my mind, they're complicit in this problem, right? They're subtly demanding that you show up at these unrealistic levels. And so they're complicit in causing the burnout because you're thinking it's what you need to do. They're not telling you that's not what you need to do. So there's a disconnect. And that's why I think organizations are complicit. So I want to first talk about what organizations can and should do to combat burnout, and what we as women must do on our own behalf to protect ourselves. Now, one of my past clients shared a post on LinkedIn recently, actually, it was maybe a day or two ago about her pride in working for a company that prioritized the health and wellness of their female employees. And the company, in honor of International Women's Day, gave all of their employees an extra day off to prioritize their health and to support the women in their lives. That's specifically what they said, that we're giving you a day off to prioritize your health and to support the women in your lives. That is powerful. That's innovative. Now, while some may think that the cost to the organization of letting everyone have a day off is a lot, this company is playing the long game. So they know that that gesture of has positively impacted their retention rates, have lowered their absenteeism, and probably their health co- health care cost. So by playing the long game, thinking about the health and well-being of their people versus what it costs to give everyone a day off, they're going to reap the benefits over and over and over again. Similarly, organizations can provide more flexible work hours, including hybrid and remote work, which is one of the reasons women are leaving the workplace in droves. And they can also provide mental health support, like encouraging breaks and vacations and making sure there's enough breaks and vacations, right? And time off, the opportunity for time off and recognize and rewarding women for the hard work that they do or for the activities and contributions they make toward other issues that they may not see as bottom line issues. They can provide stress management training and support like yoga, meditation, and mindfulness training. There are so many practices to help to alleviate stress and get centered in the body and get connected to your body and to manage your emotions so that you know when to turn it off and when to turn it back on. They can also work to create a culture that supports the changing dynamics of the workplace and most importantly, address the structural barriers and issues of inequity that contribute to burnout particularly for women and other marginalized populations. Now, what do we need to start doing? Well, as the demands of the workplace rise, women often respond by putting in even longer hours. But what most of us take for granted is that what fuels our capacity to work is our energy. And more importantly, what fuels our energy is not an an unlimited supply. It can and will run out particularly when we're already operating at a limited level. Most of us aren't even operating at the full capacity of energy because we're already depleted and we're trying to do even more at 20, 30 or 40 percent because we're not even at 100 percent. So instead of doing more, we have to start start learning how to do less. And it doesn't mean not to do our best. It just means to do your best in five or six hours instead of the 10 hours that you usually are working, right? So when you prioritize your self-care and clear time for activities that allow you to relax and recharge your energy, those five or six hours that you do work will become some of the most productive hours you will spend, way more productive than the 10 hours you're trying to spend right now. I also did an entire podcast on boundaries, right? Which are key in terms of managing burnout. I want you to check it out. But the gist of it is to start saying no. It is a complete sentence. Think of what you can delay, delete, or delegate. Everything doesn't have to get done now. 
Certain things don't have to be done at all. And other things can be done by someone else other than you. So before you overcommit to something, ask yourself, what can you delay? What can be deleted off your plate? And what can you delegate to someone else? And also ask for help. This was one of the myths that I talked about in another podcast episode that we have got to let go of. Trying to prove to the world that you don't need help and you can figure it out all on your own is just plain wrong. And I'm going to say it. It's just stupid. Who has ever done everything on their own? No one. And that myth of I don't need help and I can figure it out will drive us all into an early grave. We all need support. We all need backup. So start asking for it. After you decide what you can delay and delete and delegate, still get that support you need for anything else so that you aren't the only one carrying all of the weight and all of the burden. Finally, prioritize your mental health by taking the time and making the space to reflect on your goals, your values and interests, and to create the vision for your life and for your future. Now, this isn't some woo-woo feel-good stuff. And if you think it is, let that go and just embrace it because it's important for your own mental sanity. Practicing mindfulness and allowing yourself to listen to yourself and to listen to your body will allow you to take steps that will actually be better for you. So start doing what your mind and body is telling you to do. You'll then achieve the success that you want in your career when you have the mental health and physical agility to do so. My near fatal car accident changed my life in so many ways. But one of the critical ways it changed my life is that it gave me the time and space to think, reflect, and listen to what I wanted. The trajectory of my career and life changed significantly because I had the space to do that thought work, to be reflective and to be mindful about what was important for me, and to then take active steps to support that. And while I don't have the data on this, anecdotally, I am convinced that women have to have a significant life event to happen to them before they wake up and pay attention. And I say that because time after time after time, I have talked to almost almost 50 or 60 women, and they have almost to a fault all said that it was some event in their life that caused them to course correct, right? But you can improve your overall well-being and reduce your risk of burnout right now without a significant event by making self-care a regular part of your daily life rather than on occasion when you go on a vacation or decide maybe to take some time off. While there are several pathways to success, avoiding burnout should be on the top of the list. Maintaining your physical and mental health will improve your overall well-being and ability to perform at work. And avoiding burnout helps to reduce the risk of anxiety, depression, and chronic illness, which can make it difficult for you to be productive and achieve your goals. And avoiding burnout will help you to maintain your motivation and engagement and job satisfaction. And not to mention when you have a clear mind and energy, you can focus on what you want out of your career and take the necessary steps to achieve it without succumbing to the peer pressure or external expectations around you. And for organizations, when they take an active approach to preventing employee burnout, they'll improve employee engagement and retention, as well as improve productivity and performance, because they'll then partner with employees to help them achieve their goals and to function at a higher level. They'll improve their bottom line by decreasing absenteeism, healthcare costs, and improving overall profitability. And it starts by creating a culture that values the mental health and well-being of employees, like the way my past client's company demonstrated by giving everyone the day off for International Women's Day. Now, if you find that you've been struggling in your career, there could be several reasons. But make sure you check for the signs that there may be some burnout. You want to make sure that's not one of the reasons. And if it is, take action, get help, and prioritize yourself it'll lead you to the success that you've always been seeking and always wanted in your career. Well, that's it for this episode. And that's a wrap on season six, Rebels. I want you to take care of yourself and incorporate ways to prioritize you this year and watch how it changes both your life and your career. See you next time and have an amazingly 
rebellious week. That's it for this week's episode. Hey, and if you're loving what you're learning, be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe to this podcast so you never miss another episode. Also, don't forget to read the show notes and grab the free resources mentioned so you can start implementing what you're learning right away. Finally, are you ready to unlock your potential and fearlessly go after the career and life you want? Then join me and a community of other high achieving women in midlife, stepping into new levels of leadership, switching it up to do the meaningful and fulfilling work they're meant to do, and glowing up by creating the systems of freedom to achieve their dreams in Fearless, the Career Rebel Academy. You'll find the link in the show notes. Simply fill out the application and together we'll determine if this is the right fit for you. I can't wait to see you there.